Um, so hello everyone, thank you for joining uh, me today. Uh, today I will be presenting uh, my journey implementing a multi-branch uh, pipeline in, with algo workflows. And actually we'll uh, tell you about the, uh, all the story how I uh, started this idea in our uh, organization. And also we will discuss developers experience in general and how to prove it. So a little bit about myself, my name is Gosha, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> And I'm senior DevOps at Rookout and a, a huge fan of hiking and pets. Proud father for, of uh, one dog and two cats. So I really like pets. Uh, so all began uh, with that, that at Rookout we are a great believers in developer, developers uh, first approach and in specific, in specific uh, shifting left. We always trying to help our developers to shift left in everything that they are doing and uh, same we did with uh, our CI/CD pipelines. Uh, so each of our developer teams actually can uh, choose whatever platform they want to use for our CI/CD pipelines and implement it freely without any concerns. So at first it's, it went great. Everything worked awesome. Everybody was happy. And after a while uh, it's, it became a huge mess. Uh, developers left, other developers joined us and a uh, team mixed and actually uh, each of the pipelines uh, used several different technologies. Uh, just an example of one of our services that used Jenkins, then triggered Circle CI, wait for the test to end, and then created the release notes in GitHub Actions. <coughs> that was uh, not that uh, easy to maintain. Uh, and the horrible part of it was that our new developers that was trying to onboard uh, needed to do a lot of reverse engineering of the pipelines just to understand what the hell they, they, they're doing. So uh, we, we choose at Rookout to consolidate all our CACD pipelines into uh, one platform, one tool. Uh, you can already guess which one we, we have choose. Um, so uh, actually the, the story of it wasn't that simple. Uh, because, be, because we had a lot of experience with all of those tools, each of our teams actually had huge expectations and requirements <coughs> from such a CICD tool that will uh, handle these all features that they need. Um, so my, o my own requirement was a Kubernetes native tool, so there's not much of them, so I went uh, and checked Argo. And, uh, but my developers had other requirements, of course. Um, so my journey as a, a developer experience a product manager started. I didn't know what, I, what I'm doing because I'm DevOps. I don't have any clue about product management, how to do it. So I started with re small research on how to research the developer experience. Um, so I, I, I bumped into a lot of articles. Um, most of them said product market fit, uh, and I realized one thing, uh, that product market fit is actually uh, happy developers. So that was my metric, and I heavily depended on this metric. So I needed a process where uh, I get a instant uh, feedback from my developers <coughs> to see if what I'm doing is actually working for me. So uh, it's actually uh, reminds, this process reminds um, remind a lean software development methodolo methodology, uh, but I renamed it. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. So, um, <clears throat> sorry. So, it, actually, it's solving an optimization problem of uh, putting uh, the least uh, uh, effort to uh, gain the maximum uh, amount of. Uh, accuracy on uh, which CI/CD pipeline I'm going to use, uh, like which platform I'm going to use. So uh, my, my journey began with this process. I started with uh, demonstrating our developers uh, algo workflow and how it works. I didn't went into technical details about it and uh, I just show the user experience part of it. And immediately I got, got my first feedback from my developers. And they said to me, Gosha, it's not having a multi-branch pipeline. We can't use it. So it was actually a deal breaker for us for adopting this technology. 
so um, I realize it's a huge problem for, our, for us. Actually, a little bit about uh, multi-branch pipelines. So every platform, uh, every CI/CD platform has this feature. Uh, you can see here Jenkins, Circle CI, GitHub Actions. And even, even I using every day with all these platforms, and I was that hypnotized with a Kubernetes native CI/CD a native tool, so I didn't realize it's not supporting this feature. So a little bit about what it is and how it helped our developers. Uh, it help us help them to shift left as the configuration of the pipeline is actually in the source code repository. And more of that, it's going to sandbox your, uh, in your pipeline. It will not influence other pipelines of other developers. Uh, as you know, if you manage a workflow, Argo workflow template, when you change this template, this template will be changed for everybody. So you can't just add another step without ruining other, other people's pipelines. So it's very hard to maintain. So a lot of them using a declarative or programmatic manner of these uh, uh, configurations. And actually, uh, after review them, they didn't care if it's a YAML or, or a code or whatever. So I started with, with a quick demonstration to, our, to my developers, much before implementing anything of the API that they're going to use. And even before that, I have asked them about their experience with this multi-branch pipeline feature of other platform. So I had two immediately uh, feedbacks. The first one was they hate long YAMLs. Who doesn't write? It's hard to read. And the second one, uh, <coughs> was that they don't want to jump to other repo just to find out what is the configuration of the pipeline. So everything should be in the same uh, source code repository where is the application lives. So I made it with this uh, API. It was my first iteration, my MVP for the developers. And uh, actually you can see here that we, in the source code repository, we're gonna have a folder that workflows that have uh, three files main YAML is actually the logic of the workflow. Parameters YAML were going to be a global scope uh, uh, parameters. And template YAML is actually going to be the implementation of the uh, steps inside of it. So it, it answered the long YAML thing because we can separate it, the logic from the implementation. And it's in the source code repository. So starting with this MVP, uh, I got a huge, uh, a white consensus from my developers, and uh, immediately I started to, to realize what I need to do. So actually what I need to uh, implement is that each of the commits and each of the branches need to have a workflow representation, a CRD representation inside the uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, environment. So uh, to, to, um, to implement it, I've chosen to use Argo event sensor uh, I will quickly explain what it is. I know it's not accurate at all, but it, it will explain what is the sensor doing there. So actually the sensor listens, it's not accurate, to, to the GitHub uh, uh, repository, to, to, and then getting webhooks from there. And once it's getting, get, getting the webhook, you can configure the sensor to template any workflow you want and submit it to your Kubernetes cluster. Afterwards, uh, Argo controller, Argo workflow controller will spin up the workflow and everything else. And actually it exposes the API that can configure the GitHub for you, so it's nice. Uh, so how it works? My first uh, implementation of it was getting a webhook from a GitHub repository, then the sensor going to listen to it, create another workflow, create a workflow that will manipulate the webhook that I, I've got and then uh, enrich it with the configuration from the source code repository. Um, then send another webhook to another sensor. Uh, I call it Cedar. Uh, and then it will create another workflow CRD that's actually going to be my multi-branch pipeline. So uh, I realized uh, that there could be some problems and difficulties with that. So I started with, with short POC that uh, trying to uh, create this workflow. Um, so I started with the Cedar part. We have two parts, the part of the web, webhook enrichment, and the second part of the Cedar that will actually uh, create the workflow for us. So 
I, I was trying to send this JSON it's to, to the sensor, and actually the sensor should uh, should inject this uh, configuration inside a workflow template. So a good idea, a quick POC. This is the, the end goal. This is what we want to achieve from this injection. So uh, we got an error. We got an unmarshalling error. Um, at first I didn't realize why, the, why it's not working. And then uh, after checking algo, uh, Kubernetes events and finding the CRD, I, I, I saw that string. Uh, that string actually streaming a marshalling problem. You have here huge problem with escaping of backslashes. So I know, knew what I'm going to need to fix. Uh, at first it's, it seems like a, a quick win, a, a, a easy bug fix, and I can contribute it as it's open source. So uh, to debug it, uh, to quick debug it, I uh, um, choose to use a rookout. A quick explanation about that. Um, we are doing debugging all day. So actually the uh, rookout allow you uh, to inject <coughs> an agent into your application and without a, a interrupt the application, extract data from it, and you will not going to need to rede rebuild, redeploy, add the logs line, and then rebuild it again, redeploy again. Uh, so it makes it much easier and faster for me to debug the, the control and the sensor in my uh, remote environment. Actually, this is the sensor from before. We could need to go inside of the sensor. So for that, I added a few lines of code into the Algo events uh, controller. Uh, the first one is actually the entry point of the sensors. It's one function that calls to our agent to start. And the second one uh, was actually uh, the configuration of the agent. Okay, I know it's small, but here it is. It didn't took, took me a long, and I found my troublemaker. Um, so to fix this issue, I don't know if you see the function that, that, that's doing it, but I just changed the one function, set bytes to set road bytes, yada, yada. It's actually, I, I changed the tests, and then I created a PR, and th this was my first contribution to open source. Okay, this is the string, and this is what we need to, to get to reach. So now we actually have a new feature at Algo Events that you can parameterize a, a whole block in, in, a, in your template. So I triggered it again. At first it worked after trying different, uh, uh, different kind of uh, templates, it stopped working. And the problem was that the payload cannot be unmarshaled into, uh, uh, like, it cannot be unmarshaled to not define struct, and in, in particular, it should be predefined. So I had two options here. The first one was to predefine the whole struct, and the second one uh, was to actually try another approach, a quicker approach. So, so I went to the second one. <coughs> so I changed the 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 flow of the seeder, and actually uh, it become much more efficient. So as before, we get in a webhook from the source code repository, then a sensor listening to it, it's submitting a pipeline, a workflow, that's actually the seeder. We will talk about it, it's very important. But what in general it's doing, is actually fetching the source code repository and then creating our uh, multi-branch pipeline and the multi-branch uh, workflow CRD. So how it works. We're getting a webhook from the source code repository. Then the seeder initializes its workflow, its a pod. And actually, it's, what it's doing, it's fetching two from two different repositories. The first one is the source code repository. Uh, this particular commit in particular branch that, that sent. And the second one is actually a, from other repo, a workflows repo that I, I store there workflow templates, and we have there a YAM, a new YAML, it's a, a template of workflow uh, that's waiting for us there. And actually the second step of it is to inject this, uh, this configuration and merge it into, into this workflow, template of workflow, not a workflow template, certainly. 
And then after, after that, we're submitting this uh, workflow CRD and we have a multi-branch pipeline. So uh, back to our uh, API, uh, we have three sources of, of data for this flow. The first one is uh, the source code repository where we have the configuration of the data. The second one and the third one is actually, the, the second one is the, the template of workflow that we have in workflow uh, uh, repository. And the third one is actually our uh, Git webhook. So how the CDR works. Uh, it's actually uh, using the w metadata that we're getting from the, uh, from the Git webhook and um, uh, naming the workflow and then uh, enriching the labels with who is the user that committed, which branch it is, how, uh, which repo it is, and whatever you want to template there. Actually, it can help with uh, artifacts and which the, the, the name of our key in artifacts is the branch slash uh, uh, repo slash branch branch. So it's make it easier for, for artifacts too. Uh, and then we injecting the parameters it's global, it's a global parameters that the, our, my developers can use in each of these steps that they're doing. And then um, we, I'm injecting the templates uh, in the template block. So it can be referenced from, from main YAML that actually will be a directed at cyclic graph DAG. Uh, and it is our entry point of the workflow. So after getting that, one more thing, it's an excellent place to actually manage all our uh, pipeline configuration because you have one file to uh, configure the TTL, the garbage collector strategy, whatever you want, the node selector, the service account, whatever. You have one place for that, it make it much easier. Then you can override it if you want to. So this is how it looks. Actually, uh, for each of the commits we have two different pipelines, two different workflows. The first one is uh, the CDR workflow that we, you can see from your left and the target workflow. The nice part of it that uh, seamlessly, I can inject hooks in this uh, pipeline and actually uh, do some things uh, before, after uh, the, the initialization of the pipeline. So for example, the CDR is updating the GitHub status of the pipeline and the target workflow, the, the exit handle of it, going to Slack the, 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 person, that, the, the person that committed uh, in, in the branch and will update the GitHub too. So uh, this was uh, one feature request. <laughs> so another thing that my developers asked for me, uh, they said, we can't use Argo workflows without debug the pipelines. And actually, th there is a key killer feature in Circuit CI. It was a killer feature uh, that you can SSH into a step. So it's not accurate, but still, you can do it. So in Algo, you have a better feature. You have these two environment variables that you can place in that inside any of the uh, steps, and it will uh, pause your execution of the, of the step. So you can exact before. Uh, the execution of the script and then stay there after waiting for it to end and debug after. <clears throat> so I started with API 2. I, I exposed them this one. I placed the debug YAML file that actually the seeder will, will uh, uh, fail the pipeline if it, it still exists in the end. So it will need not be merged into the main uh, um, branch. And uh, the API actually is allowing the uh, developers to place a particular step that they want to debug, it will pause it, it will uh, uh, change the value of the environment variables and so they can uh, use it. So actually, didn't work at first and they added to these two lines of code that check in the value of the environment variable and after that, uh, they actually uh, was very happy. So the, the metric uh, accomplished. So the one thing I, I've learned from that is that uh, I need to give the smallest value as I can and get the, the most feedback from it. Uh, and so I started with small APIs and getting the feedbacks and checking if, if 
ch checking if my solution actually work, and then uh, building the solution around it. That's it. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? Don't be shy. Uh, how this scales on in, ter in terms of uh, clusters per team? Uh, do you have a centralized workflow server, or, or you have like one per product? So I, we have one a uh, cluster. It's actually use, used for other stuff too, but it, it's used one namespace dedicated to Agro workflows, and uh, we manage it there. All the workflow, the, all the pods are there, and. Uh, and I exposed an other API interface for my developer that actually just configures which of the repos I want uh, to use. And then once they added this value, they can use this, this repo. They don't care where it's running, which server it is, and so on. But actually, it's, a, it's not dedicated a, a Kubernetes cluster, but it's dedicated node pool and dedicated namespace. Hi, Hi. Um, great talk. Um, can you list some of the challenges you still have with using uh, Argo workflows as a CI engine? Yes. So the multi-branch uh, help us a lot. It, uh, it makes the friction much less because now you need to uh, write the smallest, uh, smallest possible uh, YAML and I will uh, improve the seeder so it will be much smaller. Um, I think the, the main uh, issue was the huge YAMLs that uh, developers need to, to, to write, and they actually don't care which service account you use, which node pool it is, what your permissions, they don't want to do it. They just want to create the business logic and to use the, the tool. I think this feature uh, helped them a lot and, and made it possible to actually uh, to, um, adopt this technology. Uh, do you have any calculations uh, of cost uh, between Argo CD, uh, I mean Argo workflows as CI and, for example, CI, C, C, Circle CI? Yes. Um, I don't want to lie to anybody. And actually, uh, Circle CI have a huge team that are doing just the same, and I, I have just myself to doing so. Um, I think it's cheaper in cost in Circle CI. Uh, but still, uh, for example, w when you self-hosted it, you can uh, integrate into your already existing Kubernetes environment and use all your, your tools that you're already using for managing those pipelines. And actually, uh, we have like a lot of options. I think it's worth it. Any other questions? Yes. Thanks for the talk. Um, just a simple question uh, for Rookout: Is there an open source version which I can deploy locally and try out? Um, yes, you can. Uh, it's not open source. Uh, our SDK, is, I think, is open source. You can, uh, if you're just an individual, you can try it out freely, no problem. Anyone else? Okay, thanks a lot, Gosha. Yeah, thank you a lot. Uh, another thing, uh, in future, I think I will expose it in our GitHub repo, the seeder. Now it's huge mess, mess with a lot of best scripts, and in future it will be a nice Python uh, script. Uh, I hope it will going to be open source so all of you can use it. And me to the LinkedIn, I will surely post it there. Thank you.